Hey Zoology, um, this is Mrs. Knowles, um, and today we are gonna, um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about this, these vertebrates that are called the amniotes, the amniotes. So um, this is also to kind of help you with your uh, homework assignment um, this week about amniotic eggs, all right? Um, so let's just kind of go over this. I really like this picture right here because what it shows you is this. Um, that basically what we've been talking about are vertebrates, which are animals with a backbone. That means everybody in this picture here are vertebrates. Everybody, like fish, are vertebrates. Um, but how fish differ from all the other vertebrates would be this way because some vertebrates are tetrapods. Okay, the tetrapods would be everybody here except for fish. Um, a great example of a tetrapod, um, which are basically animals with four limbs, are your amphibians that we just kind of learned about. Okay, um, then we can further divide vertebrates into vertebrates that are also amniotes. Amniotes. Okay, so when we're talking about amniotes, um, like amphibians are not, nor are fish. Everybody with me there? Examples of amniotes are animals with self-contained eggs. And a major example of amniotes would be reptiles, which are these guys here. These are my reptiles. Um, birds, birds, and all mammals. Okay, there's some other fancy words going on here, like synapsids and diapsids. Probably won't make a big deal about it this year. But, um, that's what we're going to be looking at is what it means to be an amniote. What does it mean to be an amniote? All right. So just to kind of review one more time, check this out again. I like that, that I like this, I like this, but, um, if we're looking at amphibians to reptiles, it's all about the egg. So amphibians are not, not amniotes. And that is because amphibians are still connected to water. Okay, they have type of external fertilization. Um, and again, remember the word amphibia means double life. So what that means is they are connected to the water. They can, amphibians can be terrestrial, but then they have to go back to the water mainly to lay their eggs. And that is because of this. Their eggs lack an outer shell. So all amphibian eggs, the eggs must be deposited in water or very damp location to prevent the drying out, okay? Um, again, all fish live in water, so their eggs would look very similar to this too, but all amphibians have to go back to the water and lay their eggs. Look at these eggs here. See, you can like see through them. They do not have an outer shell. Not amniotes, okay? To be an amniote, Here's what you got. Um, we believe the amniotic egg developed about 350 million years ago, and an amniote or amniota is a group of animals that include, these are my reptiles, birds, and mammals. And that's because um, these animals um, have amniotic eggs um, either inside of them, like mammals would, or they lay eggs like reptiles and birds do. Okay, and that's what we get to talk about rest of our time together through this PowerPoint is about the amniotic egg. All right, so I know you guys always miss cladograms. So um, just one last view. Here's cladogram. These are all the amniotes um, out there. Uh, a lot of them are extinct, but basically mammals are amniotes. All reptiles, that's what that is saying there, are amniotes. And all birds are amniotes. And then we believe dinosaurs were also amniotes. So that's kind of cool. Um, all those animals are extinct, though. Okay, let's get to it. So here's what you're going to really need to know. What does it mean to be have an amniotic egg? What is an amniotic egg about? Um, they are not found in fish or amphibians, okay? Everybody else that's a vertebrate has some type of amniotic egg. What we're going to talk about and what your homework assignment is about is being able to identify what the amnion is, the atlantos, the chorion, and the yolk sac. And then, of course, the outer shell, too. Okay, so here's a nice picture. Let me let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to give detailed information about each of these terms right now. So uh, <clears throat> the amnion protects the embryo from drying out and provides cushion. I would probably get that down. That's good information. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the amnion then is the fluid that the or the embryo is in. 
it's kind of like um, it's like their own little watery situation. You guys were in this too, um, being a mammal. Um, and so this is how we get away with um, having kind of being like an, a little bit of a fish and an amphibian. You know, they don't have all the rest of this stuff. They have to put their babies in water. And that's what the amnion is. It protects the embryo from drying out, provides cushioning. Okay. The Atlantos. Okay, so check this out. It's right here. Um, check it out. It is, can you see how it's connected to the embryo? It collects waste from the embryo. So this is where all waste is stored, is in the Atlantos. The Corion is where gas exchange occurs. Um, so it's this outer, very thin layer right here that surrounds the entire embryo. Okay. Um, if you've ever had a hard-boiled egg before, that Corion is that thin clear membrane from the hard-boiled egg, if you know what I'm talking about. If you've eaten hard-boiled eggs, that's what the chorion really is representing. But it is a place for gas exchange. Um, the yolk provides nutrition, of course. This is the yolk. This is how this little embryo would get its nutrient uh, nutrition. And then the outer part, uh, a lot of um, amniotes have either a hard or um, leathery shell right here. Um, and so all amniotic eggs of birds and reptiles, of course, have this, right? They either have a very leathery shell, like a, that would be more of a reptile, or a very hard shell, like a bird. Um, this is where we differ as mammals. Mammals lack the Atlantos. They lack the yolk sac. We have a placenta instead, for the most part. Um, and, of course, no shell, because everything happens inside the body of the mammals, okay? Um, but the key thing about being embryotic are one, two, three, four, these five terms right here. Okay, so let me show you some more pictures of these five terms. That's all I'm gonna do. Um, this just kind of gives you a different picture. Um, again, the extra embryonic membranes, again, are the amnion, the fluid, the atlantos, waste, chorion for gas, the yolk sac, okay? Um, we do have that shell. Um, and then we do have this thing called albunum, which is um, kind of the white part um, around the chorion. It's around the chorion. Um, this would be like the white part of an egg if you've ever had an egg, okay? Whereas the yolk would be like the, the yellow part where all the nutrition is, okay? Where the embryo would develop. Again, that's the next picture. It just kind of goes over, you know, the amnions for protection, the atlantoses collect waste, chorion gas exchange, Yolk is for food, the amnion, just a little bit of protection there, and the shell represents that external development that um, is also for protection too, okay? All right, and that's kind of what I have here. It's just lots of pictures of all of these structures. If you want to come back and look at this, you can. You should be able to um, identify all these with their function and be able to identify them in an egg. Um, again, the amniotic egg allows vertebrates to reproduce on land. That is the most important thing. This is how all vertebrates are, that are amniotes are different from fish and amphibians. Okay, and again, this is what you need to know. The amnion, the atlantos, the chorion, yolk sac, and then that outer thing is the shell. All right. Um, a couple other things that make um, amniotic um, vertebrates a little bit different from all the rest of the vertebrates out there is their anatomy and circul circulation. Okay, um, these are the first animals that really walk on land 100% like reptiles do. Um, so reptiles have a funky walk to them. Their legs are not right underneath them. Their legs kind of sprawl out. So they walk in the sprawling mechanism. Whereas, you know, other amulets like mammals have their limbs directly underneath their body. So that's kind of a big difference between like reptiles and mammals. And of course, birds can fly. Okay. Um, all amniotes have two circuits of blood vessels. Here's what that means. If you are an amniote, that means y'all have lungs, right? You have a pulmonary circuit that you get oxygen from your lungs, and then the systemic circuit is getting it to the rest of the body. Um, again, check this out. Amphibians do have lungs, but they can also get oxygen via their skin and possibly gills, and all fish have gills. So um, this is, you know, if you're an amniote, everybody is having lungs, all right? Also, if you're an amniote, you have a three to four chamber heart, 
Reptiles, which we're going to talk about next week, have a three-chambered heart, and all birds and mammals have a four-chambered heart. But check it out, if you remember. Um, amphibians also have a three-chambered heart, but reptiles, check this out. In where their ventricle is, they have this septum. It's a partial septum, partial septum. Um, amphibians did not have this. Okay, so um, there is still some mixing of blood, but not as much as amphibians mix their blood. And of course, birds and mammals have a complete septum, which separates the right and left side of their hearts, and it makes them have four chambers, makes them have four chambers. All right. Um, amniotes can either be ectothermic or endothermic. All other vertebrates that are amniotes, like fish and amphibians, they're all ectothermic. Um, but amniotes can be one or the other. Again, amniotes manage their body heat in different ways. Ectotherms have body temperatures determined by the surrounding environment, and endotherms use metabolic heat to keep their tissues warm. Um, endotherms then um, can live in a wide range of climates, unlike ectotherms. Um, the only amniotes out there that are ectotherms are reptiles. That's it. So they have to, their body temperature is determined by their surroundings. Um, they also don't have a four-chambered heart. All other amniotes um, are endoderms like mammals and birds. Again, mammals and birds, they have a four-chambered heart. Um, and so they this makes them get better oxygen. They have a higher metabolism, which makes birds able to fly. Um, and mammals um, then can live in all these different um, ranges of climates because they control their body temperature from within, as do birds, okay? All right, that's all I got for you this week. Um, again, if you have any questions, problems, or concerns, please let me know. Have a good one.